Hello everyone, this is Kev here from LifeSuccessEngineer.com and today I am joined by a very special guest for another episode of the Tribe of Arbitrages. We've got Elliot on the episode and he's going to answer the six questions for us, all things to do with arbitrage, reselling. He's a very successful um, online seller. I've been following Elliot for some time on Instagram. He's doing some amazing work out, sharing his journey, sharing everything that he's done, which is amazing. So thanks very much for coming onto the show, Elliot. I'm really looking forward to this one. Thank you, Kev. I'm really looking forward to this as well. I've been looking forward to it for a long time now, actually. Been prepping. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I've been I've been watching you, Elliot, and, and you've done incredible work. You've helped so many people. And I'm just I'm really, really looking forward just to seeing what your answers are and how you're going to support more and more people. So do you want to just give everybody just a short bio of who Elliot is, what you've done up until this point and whereabouts you are on your journey? Of course. Uh, So my name's Elliot Stout. I'm from Leeds, uh, 26 years old. I'm a full time head of department. So head of uh, head of PE in a secondary school. But I'm also a part time bookseller on Amazon FBA. Um, I've been doing it over two years now and I spend my weekends, Saturday and Sunday, just going out, scanning books and shipping them to Amazon. I've grown such a, an amazing following on my Instagram. That's my main kind of social platform. And my kind of purpose on it is to empower and inspire people to start selling on Amazon. It's an incredible way to make a, a semi-passive income and you can take it kind of, if you can do it one day, you could maybe do it two days and eventually you could do it full time. I know a lot of sellers that do it full time now, but you, it's a great way to kind of adapt around your lifestyle. So if you're a very, very busy person with your full time job, you can still make an extra little bit of money and if you hate your job, it's a nice outlet to go out there and, you know, make a little bit of side side cash. So that is my purpose. Yeah. And um, your stories on Instagram, are they're so informative. They are so educational. They are they, they are what you share. People literally sell for for money on courses and everything else. And that's how valuable your stories are. Like you can you can follow Elliot and you can see him literally scanning books, showing the profits he's going to make. Some of these profit margins are astronomical. It's an amazing thing. It's and crazy how much the profits are in books? It's insane. Yeah, and you you share the whole process with people, which is amazing. And that's why I wanted to get you on because um you know you're doing some amazing work. You've helped many many people up until this point. So let's get on to the first question then. Sure. The first question is, how has failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Do you have any favorite failure of yours? A favorite failure. Now a lot of people will be like, I don't like failure. However, I know it sounds very cliche, but the pain of the failure pushes me even further. Um, Now, I remember when I first started, I was very naive. And when people first start, they buy every book going and they buy every book in the sales rank. Now, just to give you a brief overview of Amazon sales rank, the lower the sales rank, the better the product sells. That's normally how it works. So one being the best and 65 million maybe being the worst. I was going out there and I was buying books that were maybe ranked 5 million, 6 million, 800,000. And I bought all these products and eventually I got stung with long term storage fees. And the amount that I got stung with was crazy. And it kind of set me back a little bit. And I had to think in my head is this really something that I want to do? So I adapted my business model. So instead of going for maybe bulk buying and going, I'm going to buy everything on this shelf and hope for the best, I actually went to more like a cherry picking style because that suited me. Now, I'm not saying it suits everyone, but I really love now going into shops. And even if I buy two to three to five books in a shop, they're going to be top notch the sales rank is going to be amazing i'm going to have no competition um amazon have run out of stock 
there's no FBA seller. Uh, merchant sellers might be selling them for fifty pounds, which means as an FBA seller, I can sell it for more. They're the ones that I want, and it's such a thrill. So that failure from that long-term storage fee really kind of inspired me to think and sit down and go through what I actually wanted from the process of Amazon. Do I want to do that again and take the hit and go through that failure? Or do I want to adapt a little bit and go for the cherry picking style? So the long-term storage fees got me good. Yeah. And, and um, what, what you've done essentially is you are, you're optimizing your, your systems, your business. Totally. And when, when you think about it, like, I don't know what your future ambitions are. Maybe you want to do this full time one day, but like by doing what you've done, by going through that experience, it's just made your business better. It's made you better as a person. You've learned so much. And the, the most important thing is you've actually changed your approach and now you're getting a, a better result. Do you know what I mean? Instead of just doing the same thing and now you're going to get hit again, you've actually changed your approach, which is ultimately, which is what's making you successful. And One it's of making the hardest you... things I find is people are stubborn. <laughs> most people are stubborn. They have that little bit of stubbornness. And when they start something and it's not working, it's a, it's kind of like it's part of the brain. They do not want to change it because it's routine. They're like, no, it's going to work. No, it's going to work. Sometimes you've got to sit back and actually assess what's going on and think, do you know what? Maybe I was wrong and maybe I need to learn from this failure and maybe I need to now change it a little bit. And that's what I did. I bit the bullet and I accepted that I was wrong. And um, now things are going good. Yeah, there is no failure. There's only lessons learned, right? So um, great, great example there. So question two then, um, what has... What is one of the best or most wild investments that you've made ever? Uh, could be time, money, or energy. Um, I would say it would be books, reading. I mean, I started reading voraciously about three years ago. Um, and the best book that I've ever bought was probably Tim Ferriss, Tools of Titans, Mm. I absolutely love that book. Have you got it with you? All right. There. There go. So Amazing. Right. Now, in that book, it breaks down. Every, like, basically, Tim Ferriss has got together loads of successful people, whether it be health, mind, spirit, and or financial. And he's asked them maybe five, six, seven, eight questions. Um, and they've basically given up all their secrets now as someone who is still learning the game very young in the game um how amazing is it that we can access the minds of you know 100 to 200 successful people and know what they do what makes them successful now that has been the best investment i've ever made in terms of my health in terms of my mind and definitely in terms of financial um, I've got some amazing tips from amazing people in there, and that has probably been one of the most worthwhile investments. As well as that, <clears throat> I would probably say exercise. Now, I'm again, I'm a head of PE, so literally my life revolves around health and fitness of young people, but also myself. So exercise the benefits of exercise and meditation and mindfulness and morning rituals has such a massive impact on every other part of your life in terms of relationships you know I have a better relationship with my partner now than I ever did um, in terms of financial the drive to not just settle for a full-time job maybe that you don't like and waiting to receive a paycheck at the end um, and everything else. So exercise and setting up ri uh, morning rituals. So cold shower every morning, shot of coffee, daily stoic reading. I do three affirmations every day. I literally list three things I'm grateful for. I do a 12 minute hit training. So I'm literally in the living room doing 12 minute hit training. Um, it, that is probably the best investments. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> great, great answers. 
amazing answers. And just to touch on just to touch on a, um, the first answer that you you had there, I, I think we're living in the the greatest age ever. How you can how you can compress decades of somebody's experience, like you mentioned, Tools of Titans. Somebody, you know, the the interviews he did in that book are from people that have. They've, they've become multi-millionaires. They've become, they've done so much in their life and they've compressed it down into an answer, which can, instead of you having to spend the next 20 years of your life trying to trial and error everything, you can now know what you need to do today, right now. And well, I think that's amazing. It's the I mean, same as, sorry, go on. Go on, Kev, finish up, sorry. Uh, it's, it's the same as this interview right now. Somebody can listen to you, Elliot, and just that lesson in failure that you've learned, not taking every single book, now somebody doesn't have to go the next two years going through that same trial and error mistake and just take it on board, learn immediately. I think we're living through the amazing time. And just to touch on the, the second one that you said in terms of the, the morning ritual, looking after yourself, the energy, that's what life is, it's energy. And it shows, it shows by you being able to, um, on your weekend, on your days off, you've got more, you've probably got more energy than ever before. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing I also want to just touch in there, I know we've got um, loads of more questions, but one other investment is podcasts. Mm. Honestly, podcasts are amazing. They're just incredible. I drive to work. It takes me 30 minutes to get to work. So that 30 minutes, I have learned something about some area, whether I might be learning what, like literally every day I've got a podcast, like a series. So one day is Gary Vaynerchuk. Next one is Tom Bilyeu. Next one is uh, Ty Lopez. Next one might be about property investment. Next one might be about, uh, about Ben Greenfield. I don't know if you follow him, if you heard about it. Ben Greenfield is the most incredible, um, I don't know how what his title is, but he's like a nutritionist and a, a sports physiologist and does all, he finds out biohacking. So he, he mm -hmm. tells you ways to change the, the biological age of you. You might be chronologically, you might be 40 years old, but biologically inside, you could be 30 because you're keeping your body fit. So he's another one that I listen to. And that 30 minutes driving to work, instead of listening to Capital FM and some goofy person, no offense, just rambling on about the top 10 hits, I've now learned something. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really want to press this. That is free information and the free, it's like free time. If you've got a long commute, use that time and there's no excuse then if you kind of oh, I haven't had time to learn anything today I haven't had time to listen to maybe something motivational but you've just listened to the radio 30 minutes in your car download the pod like it's free the podcast is free so just plug it in and listen away onto whatever your subject you want yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you, you're absolutely, I mean, it's it's gold. It's absolutely gold what you've just said because we've only got a certain amount of time in the day. All of us are exactly the same. It's the only thing that's equal in life, which means it's those guys that get the most out of each day will ultimately go the furthest. And one of the, one of the things that I used to do is do exactly what you just said. Five years ago, I would drive to work, listening to the radio, the news, everything that's going wrong in the world. Now, I don't do anything other than if I'm doing some work around the house, usually I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to some type of educational based learning or some inspirational story of learning from somebody or something out there. Um, it's absolutely gold. You, you've not, you've, you, you are, you're not using any additional time. You're just improving every day. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Try so, okay. uh, question three then. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior or habit has most improved your life? Five years ago. Five years ago, I was finishing off my <laughs> teaching degree. Uh, so, so I'm 26 now. Five years. Rituals, morning rituals is, an, is a massive one I've just touched on. 
um, and creating routine in terms of, you know, I've got a morning routine and I've got a night routine. So literally no phones after 9.30. I have a cold shower. Then I have um, piano music. <laughs> nice. That chills me out. Light a few candles, relax, read. It kind of settles me down, you know, and reduces cortisol levels, which are stress levels. Um, and that's my night ritual. So and then my morning ritual I've just spoke about in the last question. So creating habits basically around that because it sets you up for the day. I've also started meditating. Now, it's a very kind of wishy-washy subject this people think meditation is like completely around switching your brain off and not thinking but that is like telling your heart to stop beating it just it's impossible it doesn't happen so I've come up with a way that suits my lifestyle so I go to the gym three times a week after work that's my therapy just literally smashing something out <laughs> and then I sit in the car after the gym and I do the meditation in the car. So literally, that's my workout. I physically worked out. And now my mental workout is to sit. And I, lish, I listen to someone called Vishen Likiani. And nice. he does what we call the six phase meditation. Um, I, bought book, I bought his book over day and I read it. It's called The Extraordinary Mind. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend that one. I've got it on my shelf up there. And again, he has... Um, He's kind of changed the way I look at meditation now. And he, he, he walks you through that six phase way of, you know, just time to relax, time to vision, time to forgive people that have maybe annoyed you in the day. Um, then talking about, you know, being grateful for things. And then you go home and you feel better. And I mentioned this in the interview with Amazon Success Creation on their YouTube channel, um, how People think you it's a waste of time. Oh, my God, 20 minutes, 50 minutes. However, it buys you time. It really does buy you time in the future because it makes you less stressed and less anxious. And we've got, all got anxious stuff in our lives. We've all got maybe a little bit of anxiety here and there. And I feel like that has probably been one of the best habits that's improved my life. And it's, a, it's a, again, absolute gold. It's amazing. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it makes a big difference because you're now, you're oh. now, you know, you're now proactive on the way you feel every day. You've now taken control on how you feel every day and what you do every day. Instead of having external circumstance dictate the way you live your life, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's one of the most the, the one of the most empowering changes that anybody can make. Take control of what you do every day. So, uh, great answer there top man okay then question four then what best advice would you give somebody just about to enter the world of arbitrage uh so i literally just put put a post on my about maybe 20 minutes ago talking about just people starting the hardest thing to do in anything is starting because the brain i've read this the brain wants to protect you. That's its purpose. It doesn't want you to step out of comfort zones. So the hardest thing to do is start something different and new and into the unknown. And you've kind of got to fight against your brain in this one. And there are a number of outlets that you can use now to start and help you to start, including people like yourself, going and messaging you and say, hi, Kev, I'm really struggling with this. I know you're amazing with people, Kev, and you reach out to every single person that comes your way. Um, people like myself, I really try my best to message every single person back. And I try to go to bed on an em empty inbox. Mm -hmm. um, so the same with teaching. I will not leave work until I have an empty inbox. And the same goes for my, my um, online book selling business. I don't go to bed until I've messaged every single person back. And it is very manageable now at this stage um so my big thing is i know i'm very beating around the bush here but the best advice i can give to someone is to ask questions to people um is to download the seller app which is for free you can download it for free 
um, and just start scanning books and getting used to the process of Amazon um, and then messaging people and saying, you know, I'm at this stage now. What can I do next? My be other advice would be go on YouTube, look at videos. I know you've got YouTube videos out um, and I know other people like retail arbitrage people have got YouTube videos. I'd look at them. But just begin, just download the seller app, go to charity shops, scan things in stores and then just go from there and get used to get used to the process of it. Like get used to the layout of the Amazon kind of seller app and what things are worth, because it will blow you away to find out that a 50p dusty old book is actually worth 35 pounds used. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Like mm. when you find that it's like when people put a football accumulator on, like I do the occasional one here and there, that it's the thrill, it's the adrenaline. Oh my God, I might win 120 mm. with it. It's like going into a shop and you scan it and you go, oh my God, this book I've just found is 60 pounds used. Used. Like yeah. for instance, I found a Dungeons and Dragons book. Uh, and it's a very niche market. People love Dungeons and Dragons and Warhammer and this kind of niche thing. And it was £1.50, I think, or even less. And I sold it for £55 used. And people <laughs> think, no, no, you can't do that because the uh, the new price is, you know, £30. Well, it's supply and demand. If it, Amazon do not have it, the next best thing is you. So go out there, scan things, get used to the systems and ask questions. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> amazing. Like you think years and years and years ago, right? This is before the internet, before rules and everything. People used to actually dig for gold, dig for stones and like valuable stuff. Now what, you, what you're what you literally doing and what we are doing really is we are scanning for gold. That's, that's what you're doing. And, you, and you're able to do that. You've just touched on a really good point. People people put on accumulators and bets and gamble and things for that, like, oh, what if it comes in? £100, amazing. But, like, if only they knew for that same amount that they've just put on, they just go to a charity store and scan books, it, you, you, you're you now more likely to find something in there than you are probably to, to win at gambling. Well, exactly. Gambling is 110% speculative. Yeah. So let's just say the the speculative spectrum's here, and this is a fantastic investment, investment and it's definitely going to come in. Gambling is here. Mm -hmm. Actually buying books on Amazon is probably here because you don't know whether it's going to 100% sell. However, you've got a lot more chance of selling the book because the data tells you it sells. Mm -hmm. Rather yep. than, you know, putting £10 on Huddersfield Town to win and they lose every week and now we're in the championship. <laughs> yeah, they, well, that's exactly it. Your, your gambling is guessing. Whereas what we are doing, we're building a business based on data, history. We're lowering the risk. We know it sold 100 times in the last month. So the chances are it's going to continue to sell at least something, you know, so... Uh, again, amazing, amazing answer. So, okay, then what are the bad recommendations you hear relating to arbitrage? Bad recommendations. When people follow and look at other people's accomplishments, this really frustrates me because as, as a beginner, it's like I'm trying to put kind of give you a different um, approach to it, like a metaphorical way. It's like you as a trainee teacher walking into a school and looking at the head teacher's results and going, you're going to be there in a year's time. It's not going to happen. The same goes for someone who's just started Amazon. You look at someone who's on six figures, who's making, you know, gr whatever, uh, let's just say sales, who's making over £100,000 sales, you starting and going, oh my God, how come I'm not like that? Oh no, I'm not hitting the targets. Be realistic. Like, take it day by day, take it step by step. Ask questions, remain humble, and just kind of enjoy the process. Like, I love Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm his biggest advocate, literally. I 
think he's amazing. Whenever I'm feeling down or unmotivated, I go to him. So he always say, stop comparing yourself to the Joneses. That's his thing. And it's the same with on Amazon. Stop comparing yourself to the Joneses of Amazon. The big time ballers, the big dogs. I am not that person. Uh, but I'm also not a beginner anymore. Like I know loads of people who, if I wanted to, I could look at and, and always compare myself to. But that wouldn't get me anywhere. Yes, okay, set big goals. Set big goals. I totally believe in that. But also, don't think that you're going to kind of become a millionaire in a year's time. So stop copying other people's stuff. Do your thing. Stick to your lane and, you know, focus on what you're trying to do. Yeah, amazing. And I think it's, I think it, it's an awareness thing. Personally, this is, this is how I see it. I always, it's, there's a difference between looking at somebody and feeling inspired by them, which promotes action, being motivated by them, and which promotes action. So like you mentioned Gary Vee. I'm exactly the same with Gary Vee. Whenever I watch Gary Vee, it, it inspires me and it motivates me to take action, which is going to take me forward, right? If you, for example, look at somebody and it doesn't inspire you, in fact, it makes you feel lower and it drains energy from you, then you need to become aware of the way it's making you feel. And if that is happening internally and you may be looking at somebody going, how has he done this? The chances are, you know, a Gary Vee, for example, I mean, he's, he's done years upon you. He's got, he's got 20 years on everybody. Do you see what I mean? There'd be no point in comparing yourself to Gary Vee. There'd be no point in if somebody's just starting out and, and doesn't even know about Amazon, there's no point in comparing yourself to Elliot, who's got hours upon hours, months upon months of experience. You've done it. You've taken the actions. It's all about becoming aware. Like Gary Vee talks a lot about self-awareness. Yeah. And if you, I always do this, I've become very aware of when I feel inspired to take action. And if, if that's, if that's good, then I take action. If something is making me feel drained, then become aware of that and, and then develop your own personal development around massive becoming action. better every day. Massive in there. Take, take massive action. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great answer. Great answer. Um, so, all right, then the final, the final question then is, when you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or have lost your focus temporarily, what do you do? Um, so th this week has been quite difficult. It's, um, it's exam season at the moment in school and there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of hoops to jump through. And I have become very, not unfocused, if, in fact, I've become so focused that I've nearly burnt out. Um, and it... I think what people sometimes do is they always try to pretend like everything's okay. It's okay. It's fine. I'm feeling good. I'm feel yeah, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Sometimes it's okay not to be okay. And I think it's really important for the mental health of the human nation to not be okay sometimes and and talk to the loved ones and ring someone and just say, I'm feeling crap. Let's go for a beer at the pub. Come on. Or it's OK not to do work that night. And I've realized this because I know for a fact I've set the systems up where if I do not send a box of books to Amazon on that Monday because I'm not feeling it at the weekend. I will then go out on the Tuesday and Wednesday and I'll finish work a bit earlier. And it's about just adjusting adjusting to your mental well-being and first things first above everything above making money on Amazon is the way you feel if you are not feeling good nothing else matters your health is the number one priority hence the reason I went into the profession of helping young people get fit and feel good about themselves and then teach them how to mentally prepare for life that's that's why I went into the profession of PE. And it's OK, like I say, just to not be OK some days. And it doesn't mean that you're, you're in a dark depression. It doesn't mean that if you're feeling sad one day, it just means you're sad. And that's the emotion of that. And then just uh, see life as a bit of a roller coaster. See, like, I'm happy this day, so I'm going to really appreciate being happy. 
like someone said to me, I'd love to be happy every day. And I, I like played devil's advocate a little bit. I was like, well, I kind of like a ph- very philosophical. I was like, well, how would you know you're happy then? Do you know, how would you know you were really happy? <laughs> and they were like, I didn't really think about it like that. And I said, life's kind of, you know, up and down and you just got to, you know, take the emotions as it comes. So coming back to your question of, you know, what do I do when I'm feeling down? Take a couple of days off, you know, breathe a little bit, spend some time with the people that really matter to me. Um, And also every day still sticking to the routines. So writing down the three affirmations, writing down every morning, I wake up, I'm feeling pretty low. Three things I'm grateful for. Do you know what? I feel loved. I feel loved by my parents, by uh, my partner, by my friends, and I receive love. That's that's something to feel good about. Number two, um, do you know what? I'm feeling healthy. I'm, I've, you know, I've got, I've got my health. Uh, number three, it might be, do you know what? I'm grateful that I can help people on Instagram and that kind of stuff. And again, that brings it back to the, um, you know, it'll it'll make you feel a little bit better, basically, when you're feeling a bit low. Yeah, one, wonderful answer. Wonderful answer. I mean, the I think you're absolutely right. I think we're not robots. We are humans. We're we're supposed to feel stuff, you know, whether it's good or bad. Like you said, I, I, I can only we can only speak from our own personal experience. But that's what makes me really, really appreciate the good times. Because Absolutely. because you know because you know when the bad times are, and it's okay to feel angry, sad, frustrated, and all these things. And when they come about, it's just go through that emotion. Yeah. But then when when you do have the good days, and I, I love what you just said there. Actually, if you was happy every day, how would you know that you're happy? You wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? Like you just yeah. wouldn't know. So it's a fantastic answer, and I I really want people to um. To, to follow you and, and get in contact with you, Elliot. So where where can people find you to learn more about you? Uh, the best place to reach me is on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at FBA Journey. Um, and then direct message me, message me whenever. You can email me as well, uh, FBA Journey at hotmail.com. Um, and that is the best place best place to reach me instagram i think is probably the better one fba journey yeah and i'll I'll, i'm going to put the links to to get in contact with elliot around this video in the description reach out to him nicest guy that you'll ever come across he'll always like he's just said uh he will message you back support you in any way that you can and follow his follow his instagram stories because they're so educational they're so informative and i just want to personally say to you elliot you're doing a fantastic job I'm a huge, huge fan and supporter of yours. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next five, ten years holds for you. I think you're gonna you're gonna have a fantastic journey, and I love the fact that you've called yourself FBA Journey because you're gonna you, you're gonna look back years upon years and think this this has been a journey, and you've shared your journey. So it's it's a, amazing yeah, for you. It was a little bit of a cliche name, but again, referring to Gary Vaynerchuk. I remember him, I watched um, one of his uh, meetings with a young a young lad and he was saying document over create. And um, he spoke to him, he was saying, I need you to start documenting rather than trying to create every original piece. And that got me thinking, there's no one out there called FBA Journey. You've got the FBA Journey. And I thought, you know, like the social network where they take the off Facebook. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go FBA Journey here. So, do you know, every, every, from the start, all I've wanted to do is just document. Document everything. Whether it be, you know, having a no sales day. Again, okay, it's fine. It doesn't mean I failed. It means... No one's bought my books today. whoop de do in the great schemes of things. Tomorrow they will. Uh, whether it be going out and actually scanning books and showing people this, look at this book. It's on fungal infections and it's worth 50 quid. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I've come along, like it's been, a, it's been an amazing, an amazing journey so far. I mean, I dropped the ebook about five months ago now, the 50 rules for a successful FBA book business. And, um, over 68 people have bought that in five months. And the feedback from the ebook has been 
incredible. Like I've had positive things all the way through. And there's a few things that I'm going to be kind of dropping in the future. I really want to, this is the first time I've actually spoken about this. So a bit of an exclusive, but I'm going to be doing a, a beginner's FBA mentoring program where like this, I sit down with maybe three, four people on Skype and I go through every single thing they need to do to start making money on Amazon, to make it affordable for normal people. We're not talking a, a you know, two grand course here at all. It's, it's literally for normal people who just want to start on Amazon. And um, that's something that's going to be in the, the further journey. So stay tuned, Kev. Um, amazing. Amazing. So I want to, again, thank you for coming. Um, it's been a fantastic episode of the Tribe of Arbitrages. Like I said, reach out to Elliot. He's there to support you. And uh, yeah, really, really looking forward to the next one. Make sure that you, if you're watching this back, make sure you comment down below. Make sure that you ask any questions. Elliot's going to be able to answer you any questions that you've got as well. Make sure you share the video, like the video, do whatever you want to do with the video. But um, yeah, thanks very much, Elliot. And until the next time, guys, take care. Thank you.